Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I was feeling a little bit better today so I thought I'd grab the opportunity to share with you some watercolours that were sent to me by the company Paul Rubens. Paul Rubens reached out to me a few weeks ago and asked me if I would be interested in trying out the Kiaomei watercolours and of course I said yes I'm always interested in trying out new colours and um, they sent me this box this box of 24 colours I'll just open it up for you there's a little insert here that tells you a little bit about the company and also the colours that are inside and here are the colours they look lovely <laughs> Um, I believe these are student grade and they're quite affordable. I'll add the links below in the video description if you would like to find out more about them. I shall be swatching them for you today in my Saunders Waterford sketchbook I have here. Well, it's not a sketchbook, but you, you know what I mean. <laughs> and um, yes, I'll set everything up and I'll be back in two seconds for you. A little longer for me and I'll begin swatching. So here we are with my layout. And I'm going to begin swatching with um, Chinese white and the pigment number is PW4. I've done the layout so that I have space for two swatches as in mass tone and diluted but the Chinese white I'm just going to swatch once for you to see basically its opacity. Let's see. It is fairly opaque. We'll know more when it dries. Okay. Moving on, I am going to swatch Lemon Yellow Hue and the pigment number for this is PY175. This I'm going to do a double swatch for. Oh, it's very lemony, which is no surprise. Let's do a... Mass tone first. Oh, it is quite opaque. And a very green undertone to it. So truly a lemon colour. And diluted. So far these are feeling really nice. And I've just swatched. I've barely started swatching, but these feel nice. Let's just dilute that a little bit longer. A little bit more, I mean. There we go. Next we have Cadmium Yellow Pale Hue. And this is a mixture of PY65 and PY175. Let's, oh, they're coming out of the tube. Next, next time I um, take some out of the tube, I'll show you. Really nice and creamy. So that's good. There's no binder on the top or anything. Oh, that's nice. It's almost like an Indian yellow. It's like it's got orange in it. And 
diluted. Oh, that's nice. I like that. Next color is Cadmium Yellow Hue. And this is PY97 and PY65. This time I'll bring my this palette so you can see how it comes out of the tube. And see, it's it's really nice and creamy. Really nice consistency. Let me swatch that. It's very similar. Very similar in, in color. And I'll dilute that. Really nice. And the way they are gliding on the paper is really nice as well. And um, next we have Gamboge Hue, which is PY153. Very happy colours so far. Very joyful colours. Oh, this looks quite transparent. That is really nice. I think when I dilute this, it's going to be quite like luminous. That's the, that's the word I'm looking for. I'm sorry, my words are all over the place today. Some days it's difficult to find them. I know they're there, but I just can't reach them. <laughs> There we go. That is lovely. I'm sorry. My um my glasses bumped into the um yes, finding words is different a difficult into the phone. Okay, so Cadmium Red Pale Hue is next, and this is PY65, PY255, and that's all, oh, ooh, well, that looks nice. This is a little more runny. I need a little bit more water. <laughs> oh, wow. That is bold. But it's a nice bold. Can't wait to see that diluted. That is really nice. Maybe I should have diluted it a bit more. 
see if I can lift a little bit of colour. Yes. That is really nice. I'm really impressed with these colours. It's not just the, the hue, it's the feel of them. They're really nice to um, apply. Okay, so cadmium red hue is next and the pigment numbers are on this in this rather are PR149 and PR255 it's a lovely glorious warm autumn day out there today we had some really cold days moody and stormy which I really like again I'm bumping into the camera um, but I also like the fluffy white cloud days there's a blue sky and there's fluffy white clouds around oh whoa that is intense that is a blood red Oh, my circle went a bit wonky there, but it will have to do. Let's dilute that. That is really nice. Very nice. And so far, these that have dried, they haven't lost any of their, their hue. They've just stayed as I applied them, which is brilliant. Let's do cadmium red deep hue. Sorry, cadmium red Deep Hue is next and this is a mixture of PR188 and PR254 might have to move things around here first so that I don't dip my sleeve into watercolors which wouldn't be the first time <laughs> far from it oh this looks similar this looks similar Yeah, it looks really similar. It's, there's a slight warmth to it that the, the previous one doesn't have in mass tone. That is cooler. That is slightly warmer. Let's dilute that. added quite a lot of water and yet I need to add more water to it which is really good sign it means that they are very well pigmented I have to lift a little bit of the color off I think so that we can get a better idea Yeah, it's funny because this looks cooler in mass tone and this looks warmer in mass tone to my eyes and this looks warmer in diluted and this looks cooler diluted. <laughs> oh, the paradox of watercolours. Next we have Permanent Rose. 
this is PB19, right, old friend PB19. You can't go wrong with a PB19, I think. Let's do this in mass tone first. Ooh, very violet shaded. And wow, nice and vibrant and rich. Lovely color for mixing, PB19, very useful. Our next color is Alizarin Crimson Hue. And this is PR206. Oh, wow. Whoa. Wow, that is a nice deep red and diluted Very nice. Purple Lake is next. This is PR88. I don't think I'm familiar with that um, pigment number. PR88. If you are, let me know. This is, I think it's the last of our pinks and reds in the set. Oh, this is looking very aubergine. I like my aubergine colours. Whoa. And diluted. Nice. Again, this looks like a really promising colour for mixing. And we begin with the blues now. Cerulean Blue Hue. This PB15, which is of course a thalo. Let's swatch this. Very creamy for a thalo. Does it have white in it? No, it doesn't say it does. 
Okay. It just looks really opaque and creamy. Okay. Dilute that. Nice sky blue. Trying to straighten out my circles. <laughs> um, next we have a cobalt blue hue, which is PB29 PW5. So this has white in it and it's a mixture of ultramarine blue and white. I mean, it is close to the hue of cobalt. So this isn't, an, I mean, anything that says hue isn't the true pigment. It just resembles the pigment. So cerulean blue hue isn't cerulean. It's, oh, as we saw, it's a phthalo. Cobalt blue hue. Again, not a cobalt, just looks like it. Let me see. Although it might look like it, it, it doesn't have the other characteristics a cobalt would have, for instance, it, it, it doesn't granulate and um, it might be a lot more staining than a cobalt would be. So, it would have a stronger tinting strength um, if it was a phthalo, for instance. Let me see. That looks nice. Right? I said it doesn't granulate, but probably because of the PB29. There is some granulation there. Yeah, because it's um, an ultramarine. Now we have ultramarine, and this is PB29. Let's see what the ultramarine looks like. This is not a hue, this is the true deal. Oh, it looks nice. Wow, whoa. Very intense. Very bold looking ultramarine. Quite similar. With the, it's quite similar with the cobalt. This is slightly cooler, in mass tone, also in um, diluted. This is warmer. Intense blue is next. And this is PB15, which is a phthalo. Again, very creamy for a, a phthalo, which I like. Um, don't get me wrong, I like it. It's just that I'm not used to it. And dilute that. Very in 
intense and very phthalo like. So if you like bold blues, this is for you. Next we have indigo, which I would guess, I'm not going to see, I'm just going to try and guess what would be in it. I'm going to guess that there's a phthalo and a black in it. Let me see. Well, I was close. <laughs> PB15, which is a phthalo, PBK7, which is a black, and PB29, which is an ultramarine, which is... It's nice. It's nice that they put ultramarine in there as well. I like that. So this is indigo. It says indigo, but it should, I guess it should say indigo hue because it's not a true indigo. Whoa. That looks nice. Let me... um. try that wow that is whoa that is black mass tone dilute that That's like a Payne's Grey, that is really nice. That is really nice. I'm making a bigger circle because I like painting with this. That is really nice. And there's nice separation there. You can see like tiny bits of blue. And the granulation from the P29, really nice. Now we're going to move on to the greens. Um, sap green is our first green, and it is a mixture of PG36, which is Thala Green Warm Shade or Yellow Shade, I believe, and P049. Mass tone. As convenience greens go, this looks okay. Let me. I mean, it, I'm biased. I'm biased with my greens because um, I'm, I'm very, I'm very strict, which isn't a good thing. I mean, like you can obviously mix these and make them even more natural. But when I see convenience greens, I'm quite harsh and go, okay, that doesn't really look like a natural green. So I am, yeah, maybe not the best judge of convenience greens because I'm so harsh um, but no it does look nice it could use some earth color in there to just make it even more natural but it's it yeah it's okay hooker's green light is next this is PB15 PO49 and PG7 let me put some on my palette. Yes, this looks like a phthalo just by putting it on the on the palette. But it is really intense. This with some earth colour in it for me would make a nice green. 
I believe the earth colours are coming up. So we'll, we'll see see them in a bit. I always feel bad afterwards when I talk about thalos and it sounds like I'm, I'm, I'm dismissive of them. No, thalos are great. Thalos are brilliant. It's just I am the <laughs> issue because... I um I don't like heavily staining colours. I don't like very intense colours. Um, between the two, the intensity and the staining, I think what bothers me most about thalos is the staining, because I I I, I paint slowly, so I don't have a lot of time to actually play with my watercolour on the paper, which I would like. I would prefer. Um, so, yeah, I'm a bit, let's just say, I'm, I'm not critical of phthalos, I'm, well, they scare me a little bit, and maybe I need to get over it, maybe I'll find a way to work with phthalos better, so it's a me issue, <laughs> it's not the phthalos. Emerald, next. Emerald is PG7 and PY175. My guess is that emerald is going to be really intense. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. Whoa. That is intense. And dilute them a little bit. Yeah, that is the most um, artificial green of the of the bunch, I'd say. Okay, these are. These two are nice though. They're nice. I like them. Could use a little bit of earth colour in them to just give them a little bit more character, but I like them. Burnt Sienna is next. Let's see what our Burnt Sienna is going to be like. Oh, I didn't read the pigment number. It's PR101. The jingling is below. <laughs> he's sleeping on my drawing chair which is his favourite spot to sleep when I'm not there that when I want to be there he just won't budge I have to lift him up and put him in his bed so that I can sit there okay very orange leaning burnt sienna I want to see this diluted Almost yellow leaning burnt sienna. Yellow orange leaning burnt sienna. Nice. I would like to see how it's going to granulate if it does. Raw umber is next. And this is PBR, PBR7 and PY42. That looks quite opaque, yeah, for a raw umber. Like a very dark ochre. This looks like a very dark ochre. And dilute that. Let's 
going to need more water. Yeah. Very opaque. Very opaque. Van Dyke Brown is next. Again, I forgot the number. The numbers. This is a mixture of PR101 and PBR7. Oh, I like that. I like me a dark chocolatey brown. That is nice. Dilute that a little bit. Yes, I like that. This looks like it's going to granulate as well. These two haven't really. Next we have Burnt Umber, which is a mixture again of PY42 and PBR7. I'm guessing this is going to be opaque too. Yes, it feels opaque on my brush. Oh, need a little bit more diluting. I've got a big blob of colour on there. This is really nice. I'm liking that. Yes, very. This is like even a darker ochre. This, I mean, those two are really interesting colours, but I wouldn't call them raw umber and burnt umber. Let's dilute that more. I get it when you dilute them they kind of look like that but they don't behave like a raw umber and a burnt umber anyway ivory black is our last color and this is PBK9 Okay, let's do the ivory black mass tone right here in the corner. <laughs> it's difficult to paint. Hmm, it is, I'd say, warm. It's a warm black. And dilute that. A very warm black. Okay, so now that I have swatched them, I'm going to let them dry and I'll come back and talk about them a little bit. Now that they have all dried, I'm back with my final thoughts on the colours, and I have to say, I'm really impressed. I'm really impressed by how they came out of the um, the tubes. They came out really smoothly, no binder, no extra binder. They were like nice, creamy. Um, applying them to my palette and mixing 
on the palette with them was was very easy to do um, applying them on the paper they, they glided beautifully there was no um, chalkiness about them and as I was walking around the table when I was waiting for them to um, to dry I got up and walked a little bit about um, I, I looked at them and thought my goodness they are so vibrant and they've stayed the hue that I applied they they didn't dry into something very muted or very um you know uh, lackluster it, they're really the same as when I applied them well mostly I mean there are slight differences like some colors obviously dried a bit lighter but overall really nice beginner set I would say um if I had to be picky <laughs> I would say that um, the earths didn't quite do it for me because for instance the raw umber and the burnt umber had um, this opacity to them which I mean you can find but you felt that they were more like ochres when you applied them uh, which is just me being very 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 picky here I mean the colours when you dilute them are close enough to a burnt umber and a raw or umber. I, however, I did like I really like the Van Dyke brown. I believe the Van Dyke brown and the indigo to be my favourite colours from the set, which is no surprise because I like these colours. I like browns. I like chocolatey browns and I like greys and moody blues and that kind of thing. Um Another thing that I would have changed, I would possibly, I know that they're more expensive pigments, but I would possibly put like a real cobalt blue in here. Because as a beginner, it's not just about learning about the hue of the color, I mean what the color looks like, it's also about learning um, how a pigment behaves. And cobalt blue is one color that I mean lots of artists use and it would be nice but I do understand why they they changed it I mean most beginner sets have hues in them like cobalt blue but there's they're, they're some really beautiful vibrant colors like rainbow colors um, yes I, I wouldn't hesitate in recommended it re recommending this to a beginner because it's a really good set. Um, let me show you the set again. There we go. And they're really quite big tubes. Let me see what, how big they are. They're 12 millilitres. That's a, that's a quite a big tube. I mean, it's a lot of color to get through. Um, so yeah, I'm very impressed. I am very impressed with them. Um, just to note, this is a 100% cotton watercolour paper cold pressed, just so that you know what kind of paper I was swatching. And this I was swatching with my number four Da Vinci Maestro Kalinsky brush, a series 35. So if you like these colours, I'll add the links below for you to follow and find out more about the colours. Um, and thank you to Paul Rubens for sending them to me to try out. Okay, so that was it today for the Paul Rubens Kiao Mei uh, watercolour set. Um, next week or further videos, I don't know when they're going to happen. As I said, I am going through a little bit of a rough period uh, due to health and I have you know I have limited energy to do things so um, I am going to see because I've got two very exciting things happening uh, the two very exciting things arriving uh, soon I hope um, that I will want to share with you so I'm going to see how I feel and I'm just going to film when I can. 
so for the coming weeks that's I think that's going to be the um, the plan I'm just going to film when I'm feeling up to it and I wanted to thank you for understanding and being patient with me thank you thank you so much um, so I am oh I have to say my awkward bit <laughs> If you like this video, please like this video. I mean, hit the like button because that helps the video's visibility. If you would like to see more videos by me, please subscribe and hit the notification button so that YouTube will alert you when I have a video, um, when I have uploaded a new video. I love your comments, always love your comments. Um, let me know what you think of this set. Have you tried? Paul Rubens colors, the Kiaume, um series. Let me know your thoughts. And um, we you know, as a watercolor community here, we're always learning from each other. So it would be great if you could share your thoughts with us. Um, I'm going to leave you here. I wanted to thank you so much for being here. Um, I hope to see you soon. I really hope so. <laughs> <laughs> but for now I'm going to leave you I'm going to say keep safe, keep creative and hold on to that hope even in the darkest days there's always a light and just hold on to the thought of that light okay holding holding on to it right there with you okay um, so bye bye for now um, and I hope to see you soon bye Bye.